so welcome back to another video. Now today, as you can see, I've finally managed to get out on the kayak again. This is only the second time this year I've taken the kayak out. My first trip was a lot earlier in the year. We did a bit of wrasse fishing. Today I've come out completely just to explore. Um, now, like I've said before, I'm completely new to kayak fishing. Um, I'm just finding, finding my feet with it. So I've come out today with two rods. And I've got two lure rods with me. Um, and one of them, I'm just gonna be throwing some lures about and hoping for a bass or absolutely anything to be completely honest. And the other rod, I've got a two hook flapper rig set up with very small size four hooks. Um, I've got a bit of lugworm with me. It's not fresh, it's frozen. I was gonna go and dig some lugworm earlier today, earlier this morning, but uh, I just didn't have time. So I ended up going to the tackle shop, getting a couple of wraps. I've not got a lot at all because I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be out for. Got a couple of wraps of frozen lug. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna be putting little, little tiny, um, probably half worms on each hook, dropping it down. I'm not anchoring or anything today. I've come out, it is, well, I've come out 40 minutes before low tide. Um, so I thought if I'm gonna fish some baits, I want the tide to be slack. Uh, over here we get big tides. At the moment it's about the eight meter mark, but it will be surprising. Even on the smaller tides, you get pushed off uh, marks pretty quickly. So that's the plan. I'm gonna be throwing out some baits. Um, hoping for, or what I'm hoping for actually, to be completely honest with you, would be a Cooch's Bream. Um, a Cooch's Bream or a Black Bream would be ideal. I'm sure we might, if we come into any fish, we'll probably come into some wrasse maybe. Um, so we're just gonna give it a go and just see. We're just gonna cruise about for the next sort of two hours. I'm not gonna be out for too, too long. Um, I don't wanna be out when that tide starts racing. So that's the plan. Um, I'm just paddling around at the moment. There's a reef to my left-hand side here. I'll put the other camera on in a second because we've got two cruise ships moored up uh, today. So a lovely, lovely bit of scenery. Lovely, beautiful weather. Hopefully we can find a fish or two. So maybe you can see in the background here, a big patch of reefs to my left-hand side. We've got one of the cruise ships moored up just to the right of that. Now the other one is behind these rocks, so you won't see it from here. But uh, what I'm paddling over at the moment is all rough ground. So I might just chuck a lure out. I've got a metal on to start with. Um, it's hard to tell how deep it is here, really. But I might just bounce some metal about and see if we can just come into contact with anything. There's a chance of a mackerel as well, possibly. Um, and like I said, wrasse or bass. So yeah, I might do that first, have a little flick about with a metal lure and we'll start fishing. So this is what I'm gonna start with today. Just a little sidewinder jig here in a cotton candy color. Now for the lures, I'm using um, Savage Gear rod. It's a seven foot rod, 15 to 45 gram. Wow, check that out. First cast on the kayak. I reckon that's a mackerel. I don't believe that. <laughs> oh, it's come off, no. It's come off. First cast on the kayak. Now, last time I was out, was that, oh, I thought there was another fish then, but I think that's the bottom. Yeah, it's the bottom. Well, let's get that back into the kill spot. Whoa, you see that swell there? There's fish here. Now, I wonder if that's bass or mackerel. Felt like a mackerel. Yeah, last time I was out on the kayak, the only time, I had a knock, or I had a fish on briefly, straight away, and then I went hours without anything. Let's just bounce that about. Ah, that's the bottom. So that is how you hook a fish first cast and lose a brand new lure the second. 
not happy. Not a great start. Now, I've, I had to snap it off. I just couldn't get it out at all. I wound it in. I got all the way next to it. Tried to pull it out, but uh, I couldn't get it out at all. Now, it's pretty shallow there. I've just found that out. However, that was a fish on the first cast. It felt like a mackerel. Um, I could be wrong. It could have been a little bass, but it felt, felt to me like a mackerel. Now, I've just tied a new leader on and I've put a top water lure on instead, just to be safe. So, I'm going to turn around and throw that out. This is the thing around places like this. They do drift around quite quickly and it, it can become difficult to fish. Well, so far it's not exactly been successful. And we've got an offshore wind today as well. It's not too bad, it's about 10 mile an hour. But it's pushing me right into the rocks. So I only get sort of two casts maximum before it's pushed me way too close. And obviously you can't get too close because if you end up hook, hooking a fish, you're still going to be drifting into the rocks and you're going to have to deal with a fish. It's just, yeah. Only one of the nightmares of kayak fishing. Fish on. What we got here? I think it might be a little bass. It is. Oh hey, first fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come here, mate. Right, I don't have a net with me today. Come on. That is lovely. First fish on the kayak. We have a little bass. Now then, let me get sorted and I'll give you a better show. So first fish down, happy days. Now change from the top water lure. All right, mate. Cut it out. Let's go. There we go. Here's a feisty one. First fish, little bass. Absolutely stoked about that. Now that was taking on the fish. Um, crazy eel. Just a tiny little lure with a very small hook, but he's hooked really well. But that's the lure there, it's just a little soft plastic. There's only a seven gram lure. And we've got ourselves lovely bass. I'm stoked about that. So let's get him back. Off you go, mate. Now, sort the rod out in a second, but... This is what I mean about, you'll see on the camera here. I hooked that bass out there, and just by the short little fight and unhooking it, drifted me right into the rocks. Now my thinking was, I was drifting too fast into the rocks, um, so I decided just to paddle a bit further out. There's a patch of sand and a buoy out there, and I thought if I just sort of line up here, I can gauge how fast I'm drifting in. But it, um, it, what I must admit, I had a few casts out there with this little soft plastic, deep water, and uh, it didn't really seem like the, best, the most ideal place. So as I drifted halfway in again, I started flicking the lure further this way. And sure enough, we hooked into that little bass. So. Only a small thing, but I'm absolutely stoked about that. That's the first bass I've had on the kayak. Next one's going to be a 10 pounder. So we'll get set up and uh, do the same thing again. Now, like I said, that's the lure there. It's only a little seven gram um, soft plastic, this from fish. It's one of the crazy eels. Um, but th big thanks to Jay from Smash Fishing because uh, he gave me a few soft plastics like this, some lighter ones for the kayak and a few heavier ones for, for on the boat. 
So massive thanks to him. First fish on it, happy days. I'm just gonna paddle a little bit further this way and turn around. And we'll give it another flip. I should have just, uh, I shouldn't have really bothered with the bait today because to be honest with you, I thought, I didn't think the tide would be pushing me around this much. There's sandy areas to bait fish, but by the time you drop a bait, you're gonna just swing off it. Um, you really need to be anchored. But I didn't want to bring your anchor out with me. It's, to be completely honest with you, the kayak fishing, it, it gets me a bit, I don't know. There's a lot to take out, so much effort. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's completely my thing. I like just cruising around, flicking a few lures, and that's about it really. You know, I've thought about doing some proper bait fishing off it, but I really don't know. Maybe Sam from Jersey, um, Fish Island TV, if he ever comes over and happens to bring his kayak, I'll go out with him and I'll learn a thing or two from him. Uh, if you haven't seen his channel, Fish Island TV, he puts up some great kayaking videos, so all the kayakers out there. Um, yeah, don't be going by what I say, I'm a complete novice. Check his videos out, he makes some quality videos. Lots of uh, tote fishing off his kayak, which is insane. Gilthead bream, bass. But in the meantime, let's see if I can catch another tiny bass. So I'm just sort of messing about with the retrieves. Straight retrieve, a few twitches. And then also just sort of jigging it about because, as I said, you never know what you're going to pick up, really. It's a bit of reef there. But it could be a bass, it could be a mackerel. You could catch a wrasse. Possibly a bream on, on one of these with the small hooks. But I've got a feeling that body is damaged already. body keeps slipping off so if you're going to use these I'd recommend um, gluing the bodies on because that's not great see that's had one fish oh follow follow and the reason that fish didn't take I'll show you it's because of this bloody lure so that's had one fish that lure and the body's gone already so I'm going to change that because I just saw that bass come right up to it swim back down that way so out with the old and in with the new same lure, got two of these. Now it will definitely be worth gluing um, these bodies to the jig heads. So a lot of lures you get away with it, you don't have to, but these ones I would definitely say, without a doubt, it's just slipping off every single time. It's pretty shallow in this bit. Wind is the main issue here. Wind is what keeps blowing me. We're uh, half an hour after low water, so we're on slack tide. The tide's uh, slowed down a little bit. There is still a lot of tide around here because obviously you've got a reef. It's, it's, the tide runs south when, it, uh, when it's on the drop. And if it's rapid around the reef, you're obviously gonna get current around that, which is a great place to fish, but it can just be a bit tricky. Especially when you're like me and you don't know what the hell you're doing. So maybe I'll cruise back up to the end of the rocks here. That's where I picked up that little bass and had that follow. Um, so I may go give it another try there. This video is mostly going to be talking <laughs> and not a lot of fish. I don't know if I said this before, but I gambled today and I didn't bring a net 
because they don't have a uh, like a folding extendable net they just have a small one which has got a long handle it has to go in one of the rod holders here so uh, last time I bought two rods out it was just a nightmare having the net on so if I were to hook a big fish it could be interesting I'm going over a massive patch of eelgrass at the moment. So that's a good sign. Where there's eelgrass, there's fish. So you may be able to see the two cruise ships in the background there. I've no idea which ones they are today. That one's the larger uh, of the two. Or well, actually, probably both about the same size. Like two big cruise ships out there. So we've been getting them in pretty much every day for the last sort of six weeks. Seems to be every day there's a cruise ship in here. Fish are. Oh. Not sure if this is a wrasse or a bass. Looks like a bass. Doing a terrible job with the camera there. Come on, stay on. Ugh. Whoa, check that out. Right under the kayak. This could be a good fish. Oh, it is. That's a lovely bass. That is a lovely bass. This is where I needed the net. Come on. Oh my God, that's an absolute tank. You beauty. You absolute beauty. What a way to get a decent bass on the kayak. You absolute beauty. That's a nice fish, that. Right, let's get to a better spot where I can sort this bass out. That was a really subtle hit. And then, uh, yeah, it didn't really put up much of a fight. There was a few like juddery, that's why I thought this could be a wrasse. And then as it got closer to the boat, I made a run or two. I'm over the moon about that. Well, that's a solid three and a half for sure. I'm gonna measure it also. On that tiny little lure. Uh, I'll explain what I did. I went up to the other side of the reef to see if the, uh, the fish would have moved up there. And I think that was second cast in that area. Well, check out that tank. In fact, I reckon that fish could go four pound. That's a beauty, that. I'm over the moon about it. Absolutely over the moon. Quality fish to get on the kayak. So that there is an absolute chunk of a bass. Now I'm debating whether to keep it or not. I may let it go. It's probably the right thing to do. But that is an absolutely fantastic fish, that. What I will do, if I can keep them still, just get a quick measurement. Just want a rough guide. Drifted into those rocks again. All right, where's zero? I'm gonna have to let go of him a bit. Fifty six, fifty six centimeter. I'm gonna have to get out of here again. Bloody hell. Oh, that's shallow. That is shallow. Uh, do you know what? I think I am gonna keep this bass because I've been out of the water a while. So, I know some people don't like keeping them. 
keep the odd one. Absolutely nothing wrong with that in my eyes. What I will do though is just give it a knock on the head, put it out its misery. I don't want it to suffer anymore. It's been out of the water for about a minute and a half, which is too long anyway. So you would have noticed that video ended pretty abruptly and I'm about to tell you the reason why. So after catching that second bass, which I did decide to keep in the end, um, I dispatched the fish and I put it in the back of the kayak. Now after that, um, it's all a little bit of a blur to be honest. I reached around to grab something, I can't even remember what I was trying to grab and within a split second I was overboard and in the water. Now, it's nothing to be alarmed about. Obviously, I'm here, I'm fine. But uh, yeah, I got, I got pretty soaked. Um, fortunately, the kayak didn't flip over. Now, literally, I just must have slipped or something like that. I turned around to grab something and the next thing I, 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 I noticed was I'm staring at the water and I thought, I'm going in. Now, I obviously got back onto the kayak. Like I said, thankfully, it didn't flip over because I've got all my gear on there. Not everything is tied down. I would have lost a lot of stuff um, and it would have been really tricky to get back onto the kayak to flip it over and get back onto it. So I was only in the water a matter of seconds before I managed to pull myself up and get back onto the kayak. Now you'll notice in the video I'm wearing a buoyancy aid. It has a, uh, a pocket in the front of it with a zip up, uh, zip up pocket. Now in that pocket I have my phone and usually I always put my phone in a Ziploc waterproof bag. However, I couldn't find them that day before I went out. So my phone was just in the pocket. Now, when I fell in the water, I was fully submerged. Um, my head didn't go under, but all the way up to my shoulders, my first thought was my phone. So I quickly opened the pocket, had a little look. It was quite wet, but it wasn't saturated. Now, I had to make a decision there and then, right, what do I do? So I literally, I got back in the kayak and I just paddled straight to the shore. Now, obviously, anyone with a smartphone knows they're really expensive. I didn't want to risk, I didn't want to stay out there and risk the phone, just all the water seeping through it. Fortunately, it was all fine. I got to the shore, dried my phone off. Luckily, the, it's in a, a case anyway, so my case is quite good. Um, if it hadn't been the case, it would have been done for. So like I always say on my channel, I like to keep it real. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, um, it's quite embarrassing going over in your kayak. Uh, if people would have seen from the shore, God knows what they would have thought. Now, fortunately, I was fine. Like I said, I was quite lucky. Um, if the kayak had had a flipped, I would have maybe panicked a little bit, but luckily it didn't, so it was all okay. Now, obviously, once I got back to the shore, I was completely soaked. Um, I had to sort, sort all my gear out, sort the cameras out, and my phone and everything like that. So I just decided to cut the, cut the journey short then. I'd been out for a couple of hours anyway, had a couple of fish, so I was pleased about that. Whether that's karma for keeping that bass, I don't know. But um, yeah, quite fortunate that I was all okay um, and got back onto the kayak and then got safely back to shore. But like I said, I'll always share everything with you. Um, it is a bit embarrassing, but these things do happen. Um, it's also a bit of an eye opener as well because you know I've made those sort of movements on the kayak before and I've never, never felt like it would tip or I'd fall off it. So. Um, it's made me really aware of what I'm doing on the kayak, so always pay attention. Um, obviously, I have my buoyancy aid on. There's a real reason for that. Um, have all the safety procedures you need when you're out in the water. Have a radio on you um, or a telephone, but if you go in, go in the water and your phone's on you, it's no use to you. So make sure you have a radio, a uh, way of contacting someone. And yeah, that's all you can really do. Now I ended up not fishing any of the baits whatsoever, I didn't drop any baits into the water, purely just throwing lures about, which I was quite happy, uh, happy to do. So yeah, um, a bit pointless taking that second rod out with the, with the lugworm, but oh well, it turned out to be a nice little trip. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And yeah, that's basically what happened that day. So anyway, I hope it's been an entertaining video. Um, 
always keep your wits about you on the water. I know I've certainly learned a lesson now, so I'll be keeping that in mind and taking that into future sessions with me. So thanks a lot for checking out this video. Um, please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And uh, feel free to share the video or share, share the link to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So that's all for this one. I'll see you on the next one.